what's happening? What week is this? What day? What uh, day is it? What uh, episode is this? Oh, all very good questions, uh, Mr. Frost. As uh, we are recording live on air, it is episode 0340 huh. of another TV Champ podcast. I am Tommy Milagro. And I'm Bill Frost. And uh, who are we drinking this week? Oh, thank God we still have pallets and pallets of Bohemian Brewery to slake our thirst. I myself... Uh, delved into the Viennese Amber Lager. What have you got over there, sir? I've got a good old Cerveza. Ah, okay. So the important thing is, between the two of us, we are we are stocked with pallets of Bohemian Brewery, our fine sponsors, as we record something that resembles a podcast yeah. in our respective bunkers. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. And uh, th- right out of the gate, I want to tell everybody, if you missed uh, Holy Kalama Vote on Adult Swim last night, uh, basically uh, hosted by Eric Andre, going batshit crazy as usual, and um, <laughs> Run the Jewels perform their uh, entire album live in its entirety in, a, in an empty warehouse with a killer light show. Now I was able to see this on YouTube. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's Adult Swim, so it's going to be everywhere. It's it's not be going to be hard to find. I, I was a little worried because I was watching David Byrne's American Utopia, which let's be honest, Amazon Prime's Utopia, no contest. David Byrne's better. <laughs> this is the better and, Utopia. Okay, cool. But I was worried I was going to miss uh, Kalama vote, but I. I uh, went on YouTube and I was able to catch it and whoa, zero fucks given by Nope, uh, look it up. Go uh, look it up, people. If you didn't see it, you should. Definitely. I I think it's I think it's on there. Let me uh, let me just go. Oh yeah, it's gonna it's still gonna be out there everywhere. No you're gonna have Okay. It's gonna be an easy thing to find, no problem. And uh, I just noticed uh, a couple of shows that got renewed. I didn't had no idea. Uh, the last OG going forth uh, with season four. Oh, okay. So uh, TBS is not pulling a Netflix, is that? No, uh, it remains to be seen if Tiffany Haddish stays on the show. Oh shit, she might be out of there. But uh, yeah, no. So, so they're uh, <laughs> they're cooking up another season of this, and this is a kind of a surprise here. Uh, second season of The Vow on HBO. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be, if they wrap up the, well, I guess they can't wrap up the story. They're going to have to squeeze another season out of this. Uh, the, the story the, of the, the documentary of the sex cult that, uh, got the Smallville actress, uh, in trouble. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The Nexium cult. And there's also another documentary on stars about, uh, telling the story of, uh, India Oxenberg, the daughter of Catherine Oxenberg. Berg, who was uh was a member of the cult up until the end there no shit yeah what's it called uh i can't remember what that one is but it, it either starts tonight or next week it's mm. on stars so yeah maybe you'll find it but uh, and then not a surprise cancellation i'm just surprised it lasted this long uh la's finest over on spectrum <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really? Were you surprised or? Well, uh, it, it sucks. It definitely sucks. And I can't imagine Spectrum is a, is a very big cable company, but <laughs> how many people are you really reaching with a show exclusive to your little cable system? I don't know. Yeah. Well, let, let's be honest here, folks. It's no Mr. Mercedes. Let's get that out of the No, case. um, I want to, uh, oh yeah, we should mention that, uh, Mr. Mercedes, if you, uh, missed the first two seasons, which is entirely possible because it was on the audience network on direct TV and, uh, mm-hmm. also another limited reach network for sure. It's now on Peacock. Oh, so you can watch that for that, free there. Wait, did you say for free? Uh, I believe so. Wow. I, is this part of the well? The thing, of- the thing with Peacock is sometimes I, I haven't haven't delved into this to myself. I know it's there. It's on Peacock. There's the free. There's the free level, and then there's the paid with, and then you get access to all the stuff, but it has ads. And there's another level that gets rid of all the ads. And uh, sometimes they'll put the first episode up there and uh, give you that one and say, okay, if you want to see the rest of this, you're gonna have to go to the paid level. Oh, basically, it gives you the first taste for free, but then 
if you really want to get your Jones in, you got to pay up. Yeah. And uh, so far, Peacock, uh, as far as original programming goes, I've checked out the Larry Wilmore show. And uh, I think Larry Larry needs some uh, Red Bull or cocaine or something. It's a little little sleepy, sleepy Larry. I've only I've been seeing Larry mostly on YouTube and his clips, especially the uh, "What the fuck, undecided voters." Yeah, yeah. Um, beyond that, that's about as much uh, Larry Wilmore as I want. He's no Bill Maher. And uh, also on Peacock, this show is fucking crazy. It's the Amber Ruffin show. She's a uh, writer for seth myers and now she has oh her my. own show and her and her sidekick are doing a show and in, in an empty basically it's a seth myers late night with seth myers uh, studio but she takes it over on friday nights and <laughs> her and her sidekick basically just do whatever the fuck they want and this is obviously a show full of stuff like uh stuff that was written that uh, seth myers said yeah that's too fucking weird for the show you can have that it's just bizarre <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, who's the sidekick uh, for Amber Ruffin? I can't remember his name, but uh, he's nobody. Nobody you would recognize. He's like is it Chewy? Is it Chewy from Jody Handler? No, Chewy is long dead. Ah, oh. is it somebody uh, that's uh, Latin and also a dwarf? Uh, no, he he is black like Andrew, Amber Ruffin, normal sized. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh oh. Well, I, I I guess that's okay. I guess, but you know. If it was a dwarf, that would have been awesome. Yeah, no dwarves. Sorry, Amber Ruffin is kind of short, but she's no dwarf. Sorry. Not, well, she's normal size. And uh, something else got canceled uh, over on Fox. This is the second time this has been canceled. Last Man Standing with Tim Allen. You say second time. As in, it was canceled uh, by Boston? ABC a couple of years ago, and Fox picked it up, and uh, they ran it for like one or two seasons, and they they're, they've decided it's over now. Season nine is going to be the last one. They said, yeah, that's enough. Uh, okay, Mr. Toolman. You know, I've, uh, I've actually been catching reruns of this on uh, one of the cable channels. I think it's a CMT, the Country Music Television Channel. And uh, I may I may have been uh, too quick to write this show off. It's uh, it's not the best sitcom you've ever seen, but it's not terrible either. It's got it's got some good uh, it's got some solid laughs. Believe it or it not. Feels- well, it kind of feels a bit metacular for me. Yeah, well, yeah, it's uh, nothing fantastic, but it, uh, it does have some funnies. It's not a complete loss. It's not hmm. It's not a complete shit show, as you would expect from uh, Tim Allen. Yeah, it's not a complete Tim uh, shit show from Tim Allen. Uh, Zachary uh, Ty, though, his son from Home Improvement, on the other hand, <laughs> he's a complete <laughs> shit show. Oh, what? Did you what, see what, that he, in the news? Yeah, he got arrested. Where is it? Was it in Idaho? Was it here in Utah or was it in Idaho? I think it was in Idaho. Okay. Um, it's in the news, uh, and by news we mean TMZ. He was uh, uh, smacking yeah. around his girlfriend, right? Yeah, yeah, he pulled an Alberto Del Rio. So, come on, man, you're better than that. Fuck that Actually, guy. Actually, yeah, fuck him. I, I don't think he was ever that great to begin with. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just people in general just suck. So we, we, can, we can agree on that. Basically, people in general do suck. And here, here's something that's going to suck for Stephen Colbert for the second time in the last five years. Uh, oh, no. He's going to, in, in 2016, he hosted a live election night special on Showtime. Not CBS, but Showtime. Right. And uh, it didn't go as planned. <laughs> it didn't go as planned for a lot of us. But, uh, yeah, it took a turn towards the end there. And uh, he's, he's going to be back and doing it again on Showtime on election night. So, did he not see the burnt umber of rage from all the viewers and realize, maybe I should cancel 2020 altogether? Nope. Did he not get that? He's doing it. He's doing it. Doing it live on Showtime. Oh, maybe dear. things will go better this time. Uh, are you wishing or are <laughs> you... Uh, because... I'm fairly certain things are going to go better this time. Well, I may I, be I'm proven just... wrong, but yeah. Well, you know, that only helps uh, if uh, if uh, people like Run the Jewels and uh, and especially America's Utopia tell people to rock the vote and uh, holy Kalama vote uh, because we need to get the fuck weasels out of office. I've already voted three times. I'm doing what I can. Uh, that's good. Oh, and uh, for the record, Todd, Todd Weiler in uh, uh, State Senate District number 23 in Utah 
Both that fucker out. Granted, he is uh, running up unopposed. Right in my friend uh, Robert Kilo Zamora uh, in his place. Get him the fuck out of there. <laughs> say, the, say the name one more time. Make sure everybody gets it right. That would be my good friend Robert Kilo, K-I-L-O, Zamora. Okay. You need... You need, you need to write him in for Utah State Senate District Number 23. This is for uh, our fine listeners, the dozen of you, that are in District 23 voting in Utah. Whereabouts is t- District 23? Better know a district. Where is it? Uh, I want to say near Capitol Hill. Oh, okay. All right. Well, don't worry. I'll, be, I'll, I'll have more information and... In, uh, in the coming weeks between now and November 3rd, just remember, write in Robert Kilo Zamora. <laughs> and th- this is the dumbest news of the past week. Dexter. Okay. Bringing back Dexter for uh, a, a, a mini season. We've talked about this before. We are still of the opinion, not a good idea. No, not no, good. not at all, no. Uh, you could, if you, if you have yet to watch Dexter and you're thinking about, maybe I should check that out sometime, uh, just stop at season four, which watch that That and you're good. Uh, remind me again, is that the one, is season four, the one with John Lithgow Yeah, or is that season five? That's the, that's the one. Yeah. Just, uh, there's no need to go forward after that, but this is weird. They, uh, they, they're going forward, forward with that. Meanwhile, they decided not to go forward with the second season of On Becoming a God in Central Florida. Don't know why. They, Is it because they Florida had, was in the title? Maybe. <laughs> that could that could be it completely. We don't want to glamorize Florida. But uh, previously, they were going to go forward with the second season, and they said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. So they, they did a glow on them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and can I just say... Because uh, uh, I got this email the other day from Netflix saying, "Hey, wouldn't you like to sign up again with us? It's only twelve ninety nine." To which I replied, "Yeah, and I saw what you did to the Glow. Fuck off." <laughs> and so, uh, also on Showtime, this is weird too. I I didn't think this was happening. Uh, there's going to be a third season of Black Monday with Paul Shear and Don Cheadle. What? Yeah. How did that happen? I don't know. It's a story of the uh, the um, '80s stock market crash, and it just kind of—it's uh, not based in reality at all. It's very fictionalized, and they're they ended uh, season two in a very fucking dark place. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it looked like uh, this could be the the most depressing series finale ever. But they're going to have a chance to uh, pull it out of the fire or whatever the fuck that was. Sometime in next short, year. In short, the Feel Good TV series of 2020. <laughs> well, it was up until the end. It was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> going How out, can you make this darker than usual? Going well, out uh, like that. Okay, fine. Yeah. And uh, right. could, could you check the uh, the Facey book there? I think we got a message. I think it's important. Oh, uh, absolutely. That, and, of course, you can always reach out to us uh, via our social media. That would be uh, at... Twitter at TV Tam Podcast. There's also uh, Facebook TV Tam Podcast, and of course, there's our email TV Tam Podcast at gmail.com. As I am quickly diving into the listener bags, uh, we received a message from our good friend Ted Hansen, uh, who replies here: uh, "No way anyone anywhere can connect Ratchet with one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Not knocking Ratchet." Well worth watching. Just Ratchet is surreal madness, while Nest is very, very real madness. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I, I was kind of thinking that same thing when I was uh, plowing through it. It's like this is this is great show. It's it's just like a a new season of American Horror Story, really, with a smaller cast. And but the whole time, it's like, yeah, how does this really get us to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Is really other than uh, the name and maybe the location, other than that, <laughs> not not well, a lot, to, not a lot to connect it really. Uh, I'm trying to remember the TV series that was like the prequel to uh, Psycho with uh, Vera Farmiga Bate, Bate, Bates Motel. So that one was a very straight linear. This is how Norman got fucked up by mom. Yeah. This 
so Ratchet, I haven't had a chance to see it. Um, is that just too early in the show to say, oh, here's what happened? Maybe. Or uh, there, I'm, I'm, I'll bet they'll do another season, seeing how it is uh, one of its top performers on Netflix. I would be shocked well, if they didn't do a second season of it. Well, and I'm thinking to myself, because with Better Call Saul, um, you can, again, you can kind of see the connective tissue from where uh, Jimmy McGill really starts to become Saul Goodman. But that's based out over, where are we at, five seasons? And, and you can see the connective threads that, you know, Vince McGill has put into this world. So, as you pointed out, with Ratchet. From the preliminary reports we're talking here, it just sounds like, oh, we're just throwing it on here, and uh, fuck, uh, fuck if we care if Jack Nicholson makes an appearance anytime soon. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll, I'll bet you have some sports news before before we get to that, though. Oh, I yeah. uh, I need to. I don't know if this rises to the level of a frost warning or not, but these uh, these fucking game show revivals need to just stop. They just need to fucking stop. Which one uh, really raised your hackles? Uh, well, well, Supermarket Sweep is back. Uh, good for Leslie Jones getting a job, but no, it's another game show. Revival. Don't really need it. And all these other ones like To Tell the Truth, Joel McHale whoring himself out. Uh, mm-hmm. The uh, Who's Line, not, not Who's Line, but all of the, the match game, all of them. Fuck them. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just, they bring funny people on, they water them down for network television, so you don't really get the full funny from them. You just get the, mm-hmm. uh, you just get a half chub funny. Write that down. <laughs> Hang on, half chub funny. Perfect. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I felt it, the, it, I felt the same way about Leslie Jones going, you're better than this. Granted, Ghostbusters wasn't your best effort, but. It is not yours or any of the women's fault. It just, it just didn't hit the mark. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so all those need to fucking go. And here, here's what's uh, also, um, yeah, you got, you got your. Uh, is the sports ready to go? It is. If you hit the music, sir. And sponsor Tommy Milagro. Go team. <laughs> From the sports desk of the TV Tan Podcast, we deliver to you only the important sports. Of professional wrestling, now website certified, as far as I'm concerned. Starting <laughs> with, starting with, have you had a chance to read my latest articles from SlamWrestling.net, sir? Uh, I believe there were two up, and then is there a third one? Is there a new one? Third one, uh, focusing on episode five, uh, which you can catch on Fight.tv. Um, great, uh, great show, which had. Uh, a little bit of a surprise matchup here uh, featured uh, former WWE superstars Chris Masters going up against Fred Rosser. And for those of you wondering, who's Fred Rosser? That is the artist formerly known as Darren Young. Um, they were supposed to be one-on-one action until, wait for it, Cowboy James Storm got into the mix and it became a three-way dance, which is interesting because... Uh, James Storm, as it was last reported, uh, let his contract expire with NWA. So UWN and NWA, I guess they came to an agreement for this uh, last appearance. Definitely worth the seven ninety nine dollars uh, price tag, which you can subscribe at Fight.TV. Not a sponsor. No, not a sponsor. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was just, okay. I was just, we, I was just delving into this uh, very uh, detailed review here over at SlamWrestling dot net under uh, for UWN Primetime Live, and I, I have to say, it's one of the few articles I've done, and you are aware of this, sir, where I managed to use the word douche nozzlery, and no one gave me shit for it. Douche so, nozzlery, nice. Yes. Oh. Uh, uh, I would say go read that. That will be posted up once uh, this episode of the podcast comes up. Coming up this week, though, on UWN Primetime Live, there's a couple of big things. Now, episode five, as you just mentioned, uh, covered a bit of ground, including a big announcement, which is going to be the start of the United Wrestling 
uh, world television title tournament. This is the crown, the first United Wrestling world champion. It's going to be uh, eight contenders uh, vying for that championship, which you got to check out on episode six, which will also feature uh, the return of Michael Bennett, who from episode one, also worth the price of the $7.99 uh, uh, ticket there. He will be returning back in action there, as well as the main event is going to feature the NWA television championship up for grabs with the champion outlandish Vicky Dice going up against the Pope. And you know the Pope is going to be spectacular. Of course I know that. Of course I know that. By the way. way, How would I not know that? I don't know how you would know that, which, interestingly enough, that's the title of uh, my episode four article on slamwrestling.net. Now, on to the other uh, uh, big news here. Impact Wrestling. Oh, yeah. Still a thing. Still hard to kill. They are going to have their pay-per-view, again, on Fight TV, Bound for Glory, uh, which is going to feature, among other things, EC3 uh, going up against Moose in a undisclosed location fight. Do it, do it. Hmm. So probably it's going to be a, it's going to be cinematic wrestling like uh, WWE and others have done. Right. Also, okay. we'll have Eddie Edwards going up against Ken Shamrock, and then uh, the big the big matches are going to be uh, the current X Division uh, champion Rohit Raju going up against TJP. Chris Bay, Trey Miguel, Willie Mack, and Jordan Grace for the X Division title. Then, in the Impact Women's Knockout Championship, it's going to be the virtuosa Diona Perazu, the current champion, defending her title against Kylie Ray. And in tag team action, it will be the good brothers of Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson against the Rascals. Uh, also, uh, it's going to be, uh, the North, uh, facing off against the Motor City Machine Guns, the current tag team champions in a four-way, uh, dance. And then finally, your main event will be Eric Young, the main event maniac, uh, who's tried to take out Rich Swan, trying to break his ankle, but Rich Swan is going to be in action for the Impact World Championship, which you can get on Fight TV for only thirty nine ninety nine. Not a sponsor. Okay, well, drink up, folks. Um, and Fight TV, you still owe me for four and a half minutes. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> Lastly, WWE. Eh, uh, if you saw the draft, nothing nah, to see here. I must have missed it. You, you didn't miss much. Also, um, as we're recording live on air, it's apparently hell in the cell and. Uh, Anyway, uh, let's get into <laughs> the thing you, that's actually worth subscribing to the WWE Network for only nine ninety nine. Also not a sponsor. Uh, drink up, Triple H. Anyway, uh, the WWE is... Com- uh, this is again on FlamWrestling.net in the news and rumors section uh, reported Friday, October 16th. The WWE is commemorating the career of The Undertaker with a month-long celebration... On the WWE Network starting October 25th, WWE Network's 30 Days of the Dead Man Celebration will feature a full month of original programming dedicated to The Undertaker. A new documentary will be released every Sunday, capped off by The Undertaker's much-anticipated return to the Stone Cold Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions, his, his podcast sessions, which, once again, we've got to really get that money in. Somehow. Podcast? I know. Can you believe that? Uh, but this is going to be scheduled as follows. So uh, on Sunday, October 25th, there will be WWE Untold, the Phenom and Legend Killer. Going to talk about the true story of The Undertaker and Randy Orton epic rivalry from 2005, uh, as told by the Phenom and the Legend Killer themselves. Then on Sunday, November 1st, we'll be meeting Mark Calloway. Uh, and basically it's going to be what was it? What's it like to meet the man behind the dead man? So superstars from past and present, like Steve Austin, Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, remember their first introduction to Mark Calloway. 
the man you know as the Undertaker. Then Sunday, November 8th, uh, will be a focus on the mortician, the story of Paul Bearer. And I love how they wrote this. With his ghoulish appearance and signature cry of, Oh, yeah! <laughs> Hall of Famer, Paul Bearer, the Undertaker's longtime manager, stands out as one of the unique characters in sports entertainment history. But the man who portrayed Paul Bearer is every bit as fascinating. Um, definitely sounds like it's worth the uh, worth the price of admission. And then uh, Sunday, November 15th, the Brothers of Destruction... Uh, the Undertaker and Kane sit down for a candid discussion about their storied careers, which has been intertwined since the Big Red Machine Kane was introduced as Undertaker's long lost brother in 1997. Google it, kids. Oh. And of, and of course, uh, as we just mentioned, uh, capping off Sunday, November 22nd, Stone Cold Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions with the Undertaker. Um, so basically, this is just going to. Uh, this isn't the first time that Undertaker's been on Steve Austin's show. This will be just a, uh, a repeat visit from the dead man himself. Uh, all that uh, you can catch. And then finally this, from Variety.com, they have announced details of the Austin Film Festival and Writers Conference running from October 22nd to 29, according to SlamWrestling.net. Uh, let me pause for a moment. Uh, Mr. Frost, I'm assuming you have your uh, film festival and writers conference uh, sign in, right? Oh, of course, yes. Oh, that's good. I was uh, I was afraid they ignored you like every other fucking time. Anyway, <laughs> oh, set of the genius juice here. As part of their lineup, it goes on. Uh, the Texas event features a new WWE Studios documentary with an absolutely very talkative Undertaker sharing a stage with Kane to reminisce about their 20 plus years' work. The film has been given the closing night slot to finish this, the festival. And you can check it out at the Austin Film Festival website to learn how they're managing things in a virtual realm this year. And just like us, you can virtually smell all the, all the wonder and joy that is the sport of professional wrestling. Because unlike football, which is getting a COVID case every fucking day, Wrestlers know how to protect one another because it's sports. It's sports. So Tommy Milagro, go team! <sighs> now, if you go, yeah, if I'm... you uh, go to the uh, TV Tan uh, Twitter, TV Tan podcast, uh, you'll you'll notice uh, something just got retweeted. Uh, this was a post. I'm not sure who. I think this uh, who did post this. This is a, uh, uh, a he's a was it us or uh, yeah it was us it was um, someone from CNN reposted this apparently he was watching the uh, whatever Trump rally this is now wherever the fuck he is on uh, Newsmax a terrible network but he was watching it there yeah. apparently and uh, so apparently since this uh, since this came up within the last week they didn't change the uh, the programming title card so. What was what was supposed to be airing in this time slot is uh, still listed there on the screen. So right underneath, right under, Hitler. yeah, right under, underneath Trumpy the Clown talking whatever the fuck he's talking about. Uh, yeah, the the title card says that you're watching the life of Adolf Hitler. Uh, apparently, this is a documentary series, and uh, this episode called uh, Rise of the Demon. So there you go. Honestly, I, did they really make a mistake? Did they? Did <laughs> well, they it really? is Newsmax, so they would not, they wouldn't uh, do that to Herr Führer on purpose. No way. And uh, uh, I did, did not get around to uh, mentioning the, the new stuff that's coming this week. Not much new happening, unless you count okay. shitty game show remakes. Uh, the Goldbergs, nope. the Connors, and Blackish are all back on Wednesday, the twenty first. And also, this is. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna what this will do for your anxiety if you watch this on HBO. It's a documentary. Uh, it's called three hundred five hundred and thirty seven votes. This is about the two thousand election and uh, particularly about the the fuckery that went down in Florida and that basically uh, elected George W. Bush uh, by five hundred and thirty seven votes. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Really, Florida? Really? Yeah. So uh, yeah, there have been a lot of. Uh, election reform since then but who the fuck knows so there there's that if you if you want to feel that anxiety all over again i remember uh i was working at the paper that time at that time and uh it was a very late night 
waiting for any kind of result. Did anybody punch out a TV at any point? Uh, probably, yeah, because okay, you don't want to, You got to have respect for a TV. And also coming up on Thursday. Speaking of fuckery, maybe we'll get the uh, the final presidential debate on Tuesday the twenty second. Thursday the twenty second. That is. Uh, are, are you hoping or? I'm just saying, I I think it will happen. Uh, is it going to happen virtually though? Is that... that I don't know. I mean, come on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm and I'm also putting in here in quotation marks presidential debate. Debate, yeah, yeah. Uh coming up on Friday, I'm kind of looking forward to this. This is a um a series called The Queen's Gambit. It's on Netflix, uh based on a book from uh, 19 I believe it was 1983. This is uh set during the Cold War and a young chess prodigy played by Anya Taylor-Joy uh she's uh pressured to be, you know, the best in the world up and coming chess player prodigy but mm. it's a bit much for her and she struggles with uh alcohol and drug addiction and uh yeah so this is a fear and loathing on the chessboard here <laughs> lightweight yeah <laughs> and uh looks looks great i can't wait to see it also uh on hulu a, a horror movie bad hair mm-hmm. this is set in 1989 oh. a young woman who's uh trying to get a job a black woman trying to get a job on an MTV like network but uh, oh, yeah. they uh, they like their straight hair. They like their weaves on a music television. So she goes and uh, gets one and soon find out uh, it may or may not be possessed, this weave. Hmm. Bad hair. Uh, Get it? Uh, I, oh, okay. Uh, I feel like this is directed by Louis C.K. somehow. Is that the case? No, <laughs> it is not. Uh, too bad. Don't remember, uh, Louis C.K. is canceled. Yeah, uh, so there's some good that's come out of uh, the last four years. Yeah, also uh, there's a, if you have Shudder, and if you watch uh, The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs, uh, the B-movie special series, mm-hmm. uh, there's a, it's his Halloween Hideaway special, and it's going to be live, and he's going to, uh, he's moved from the trailer park to a remote bunker for this episode, oh. of course, and uh, he's, he's got a double feature movies lined up that will be, uh it won't be announced until they uh, start rolling on Friday, on Friday the 23rd. And speculation is that it's going to be the original Halloween versus uh, Rob Zombie's remake, Ooh. which I hope it is. I I want that to be the case. Yeah. I, I, I really want that to be the case. And uh, uh, Quick question yeah. uh, before you go. Yeah. Which, which Halloween do you prefer, John Carpenter or Rob Zombie? Oh, John Carpenter all the way. I... You know, I would also agree. I will say, though, first Halloween by Rob Zombie. Honestly, I like that a lot, only because it makes sense why Mike Myers is as fucked up as he is. <laughs> the second one, on the other hand, no, no that's a no. that's a hard fuck that movie. Yeah, uh, coming up on Saturday, uh, Saturday Night Live. I don't know. Did you catch uh, Issa Rae? I didn't get a chance to uh, see uh, that. This she time. did a pretty good job. She did okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. There was uh, there were some right. fine moments in this episode, uh, the, the one with uh, Issa Rae and unfortunately Justin Bieber. You can just fast forward through that. Uh, anyway, uh, Saturday Night Live this week is going to be hosted by Adele, of all people. What? Uh, yeah, British singer Adele, but she is not doubling up as the musical guest. The musical guest will be uh, her, H-E-R. Don't know much about them. We'll find out. Okay. And uh, coming up on Sunday, this is... Uh, this is from the, the people behind Big Little Lies, David E. Kelly and the gang. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's more uh, more one percenter porn here. It's called The Undoing. It's about a uh, well-to-do family in New York City, uh, Hugh Grant and Nicole Kidman. Okay. And, uh, what, and they, they have a kid in, a, a, of course, a very posh school in New York. One day, uh, one, of the, one of the moms from the, their kid's school turns up dead in the husband here. You Grant goes mysteriously missing for a few days. Mm, yeah. So is he a killer? Yeah, probably. So this All is right. a, this is a very expensive looking uh, one percenter porn thriller mystery porn here, <laughs> and uh, also starring uh, Donald Sutherland and uh, Lily Rabe from American Horror Story. Okay, well that's worth the price of admission right there. So if you like Big Little Lies and uh, that that other thing that Reese Witherspoon did for Hulu that I've already forgotten what it was. This is probably for you. Okay. And uh, before we get out of here, uh, 
what should the people, what do you think the people should be watching harder out there? Well, uh, it's pretty obvious, Fargo. Fargo, uh, yeah. Without even a question. Um, it's a bit of a slow burn, folks, but I'm here to tell you right now, it is fan fucking fantastic. And Chris Rock hitting all the right notes. Jason Schwartzman hitting the pencil stash. There is nothing finer. Um, as far as uh, anything else to watch a little harder right now for me, uh, I haven't, nothing's really caught my eye of late. Um, I, 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 I don't know what, to, well, I mean, I could just go on to, you know, Amazon Prime and just, uh, uh, take my chances. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, right now, not so much, uh, at this point. Did you ever, um, did you what? ever check out Fortitude on Amazon Prime Video? Uh, I have not. It. Uh, I am going to uh, lock that down. That right would now. that would be my recommendation. Check out Fortitude over there. It's uh, it starts off great, kind of kind of loses it in the end, but still uh, worth checking out over there. And uh, I right. will, as far as the new shows, I will go with uh, again the uh, the new season of Archer. Just killing it. Oh, that's the other one. <laughs> I almost forgot about Archer. Uh it, I was showing it with some of my roommates uh, walking in the other day, and they were chuckling just because the the writers, they're just going fast and furious. It's like Baroness Von Sketch if it got air, animated. Yeah. Also, yeah, check out Baroness Von Sketch as well on IFC. Yeah. New Which season. I've been catching on uh, Pluto of late. Oh, yeah. On the, on the Pluto. Yeah. So to- in between, you know, uh, 007 on Pluto. I flipped a Baroness Von sketch. So All right, cool. It balances. All right. So uh, that's going to be it for episode uh, zero. What was it again? Uh, that would be zero three four zero okay. of the TV Tan podcast. All right, cool. And I uh, want to <laughs> thank uh, Bohemian Brewery for all the uh, most excellent beer here. Uh, uh, the, the pallets and pallets of beer that they just shoved up into your bunker hole. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but also, let's not forget our other fine sponsors of the TV Dan Podcast, Sugar House Distillery, Outlaw Distillery, Ogden's Own Distillery, the fine purveyors of Five Wives uh, Vodka, uh, Madame Paterini Gin, and of course, uh, the Porter's Fire with their new flavor, which we'll introduce in a few weeks, kids. Uh, but of course, if you feel like you want to pair up some of these wonderful uh, concoctions, just visit our good friend Ivy in downtown Salt Lake at Booze Tea. But no matter which establishment you go to, just wear a fucking mask. It's now a kind of mandate in Utah. Just do it. Yeah, we've gone from uh, green uh, green threat levels, uh, green, orange, red, uh, yellow, uh, fuck. Magenta. Magenta, uh, yeah, uh, all of the all of the the color codes there, and now we're uh, doing like what small, medium, and large, and super big gulp. Is that is that the new uh, levels? Yes. Oh, and uh, you can also supersize it, and that's just for the folks in Utah County. Nice. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, time to say uh, good night, America. Well, then jiggle that handle, sir, because it's time to. Fly.